Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the channel. I've got my friend Kevin here. It's late for us, almost 1030 at night. And the reason uh, we're doing this at 1030 at night is because that's when the market's open in America. And uh, Kevin did a couple of videos about his the way he makes money online, which is uh, trading stocks and doing puts and calls and covered calls and things like that that I don't understand. But uh, he's going to we got a lot of a uh, not negative comments, but skeptical, skeptical people writing in saying, I'm not sure that would even work. And how is this even possible? He's making that kind of money doing these things. So he's just going to show you what we're doing. And um, we're not trying to sell you anything. You know, we don't you invest any money. We're not telling you what to do with your money. You just do whatever you want. We're just showing you what Kevin here has figured out, what he's doing. And that's all it is. It's just a cover. It might get a little messier time sometime because we might be moving the camera around and stuff. And, uh, but anyway, Kevin's here. So Kevin, why don't you go ahead and tell him what the, the plan is for tonight? Okay, what I'm going to do, and for those of y'all who've seen my recent videos in March, I said uh, this week I'm going to do a video on covered calls. And this is not that video. This is going to be something completely different. Uh, the reason I'm picking covered calls is uh, because there are a lot of people right now who are sitting on hundreds, if not thousands of shares of stocks. They just bought and hold. They've had for years. Don't even realize that there's a chance for them to make money. And I use two different strategies. One, um, it's called selling cash secured puts where I make deals to where if a stock drops to a price, I'll buy it. Eventually, especially when you're dealing with such a crazy volatile stock like I, stocks that I deal with, it happens, it drops. And then I have to buy a lot of stock. Well, that's, that's the predicament I'm in right now. And, uh, so I'm doing covered calls. So what I do is, uh, you know, I paid a certain price for the stocks. Then what I'm doing is making a deal with someone out there in the world. I have no idea who it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write up a little contract and say, okay, I bought this stock for this price. And today's Monday, Monday morning in the States. And I will say, okay, Mark, um, I'm willing to sell you this stock on Friday, if it reaches this price, and that price is going to be a profit, of course, you know, selling a covered call, there is no way you can lose money unless you sell the stock for less than you bought it. And if you're dumb enough to do that, you deserve to lose money. That's the honest truth. That's the only way you can lose money. But I'm going to make this deal to sell my stock for a profit and Mark or someone else is going to pay me to do that. And so that's what we're going to go over here. I'm not going to show you the actual stocks because, like I said, they're too volatile, too crazy. Um, don't want any of y'all getting involved in that. But we will walk through the trade and Mark will verify. It. I'll point to him. He'll, I'll ask him questions and I'll have him read stuff so you can see, you know, that I'm actually on the site doing this. And then as soon as I complete the trade, I'm going to do two of them. Uh, I will be able to turn the phone to the camera and it will show that because uh, it won't list the stock's names. And we will get to all your comments too. Like while he's doing this, we won't be uh, responding to comments, but as soon as he finishes the trades, then we will respond to all of your comments. So uh, Lime is there and uh, Mark Richard is there. Lynn. Uh, Ms. Lynn is there. So uh, we'll be there for you uh, answering your comments uh, shortly. Okay. So right now the market is open. You know, it's 1030 and uh, where we are, it's 830 uh, central time in the U.S. Okay. Oh, and look at this. So, uh, like I said, the stocks that I do with are very volatile. And Mark and I did a little walkthrough earlier, and uh, the stocks that I deal with uh, have gone up since then. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on here. I'm, I'm going to do this stock first. Okay. I've got two stocks. One I own 5,500 shares of. Well, I'll, I'm going to let him read off everything. He's on Robinhood, by the way, right? Yes, this is on Robin Robinhood's app. Okay. Okay, so we're going to come here. This is the first stock. Okay. How many shares of stock do I have? 5,504. Okay, so 5,500 shares, basically. It takes 100 shares to do a, a contract. So if I have 5,500 shares, that's 55 contracts. What's my average cost per share? $17.79. Okay, so I will not sell the stock for less than that. Now, it goes in 50 cent increments, so my options will be $17.50, then $18. I am going to go up to $18 on this. 
So what I'm going to do is make a deal. I'm going to throw it out there. And right now, this stock is at $15.22. So I'm going to make a deal to where if it goes up $2.78, which would be uh, about 14.5%, uh, percent, uh, you know, it, it, it would have to go up that much for me to sell this. And I'm still going to get paid by someone for the right to do that. So we'll come here. So I'm going to hit trade. Okay. See where it says trade options. Yep. And all of y'all, you're going to have to get permission from your broker uh, to, to trade options. And selling covered calls is the, the, the easiest thing to get approved for because your broker knows you've got to be an idiot to lose money on it. Okay. So come to trade options. See that there. Yep. All right. So you see all those dates up top there, yep. right? Right. Okay. So we're going to go for this week ending on January 12th. Okay. See that? Yep. So we clicked on there. So since I own the stock, mm -hmm. I'm doing calls. See how right. that's highlighted? Yeah. And there's two options you can do. You can buy or sell. Okay. I always sell. Sell to open is what I do. So I sell a call. You see both of those yeah. are highlighted. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to come here. That's $18, correct? Yep. Yeah. So. $18 a share. And what's that number right there? Uh, 32 cents. 32 cents. So that's 18 and 32. Well, it's 100 shares in the contract. So <clears throat> that's actually like 1,800. And I'm going to get paid 32 cents a share. So that's $32 a contract. So I'm going to have to do a deal here where I put up my collateral will be 5,500 shares of this particular stock. Whoever I make the deal with has got to put up $1,800 per contract, just in case it hits there, they've got to have that money in to buy it. Right. But also on top of that, as soon as we make this deal, that 32 cents a share, $32 a contract goes to my account immediately. No matter what happens, I keep that. So let's watch. Okay. So that hits $18. We sell on the 12th, correct? Right. So, okay. Come on, internet. Uh oh. Where's our internet? Uh oh. Come on. Do I have internet? Hold on. Are you logged into my internet? Are you on your own? Is that you? Yeah. Okay, let's see. I don't have the. Well, I've, I've logged in here before, oh, so yeah, that shouldn't okay. be an issue. All right. So, all right, this will get us back. There we go. Sorry okay. about that, guys. A little scary right. there. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So right here, this is reiterating what we just said. If it hits eighteen dollars, I got to sell it on that day. Right. I have fifty-five hundred, so I'm going to do fifty-five contracts. Right. Right. Okay. Now, right now, it's it's not saying thirty-two. It's saying thirty-one, and the, the premium will go up and down. I mean, as the stock goes up, your premium will go up. As it goes down, it'll go down. So right now, it's telling me it's thirty-one dollars a contract. Telling me I got a medium fill likelihood. And this is one of the things I hate about Robinhood. If you're on a, a different site and it tells you 32 and you click on 32, it's a done deal. With Robinhood, not so much. So what we're going to do is it's telling me 31. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you can read this. 31, 31 uh, times uh, 5,500 shares and regulatory fees per contract. Zero zero point three. So I'm going to get paid thirty one cents a share for fifty five hundred shares, and they're going to take out uh, three dollars per contract. That's fifty five contracts. So it's a dollar sixty five. So what's my total there? One thousand seven hundred three dollars and thirty five cents. So right now I'm going to get paid. So let's see. Review. Swipe up. As soon as I do this. Oh come on. Oh come on. <laughs> I believe this. All right, guys, it's uh, come on. I know this is dead air, but let's try it again. Sending the order, order received. Okay, okay now see, look, this is what, what I'm talking about with Robinhood. If this were a different account, say that's saying zero of 55 had been filled, right? On a different better broker i will say robin hood's got its pros and cons i mean there's things it's easy to maneuver uh you can buy fractional shares of things but this 
let's see, replace order. Let's come back in here. This is frustrating. Okay. So see, all right. So it's dropped a little. That's why. So it's going to 29 cents. So we'll go ahead and the heck with it. I'll just do it. You know, this is one of my accounts. I'll do it. I'll do this for the video. Now, instead of 1703, I'm going to make how much? $1,593.35. Okay. Because it's 29 cents a share instead of 31. So let's see. Come on. All right. So this particular stock is not cooperating. Let's go to this one. We'll go to this one. Now this one, how many shares do I have? 2,600. And what's my cost right there? Uh, $25.42. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing, trade options. Come to January 12th, I'm selling a call. Mm -hmm. Now my cost is 25.42, right now the stock is 24.63. Um, I would be willing to sell that for $27 a share. So let's come over here. Come on, side 26. I'm going to get this out of the right way real quick. Oh, come on. Um, I'm going to put that there for a high likely fill just so we can get this done on camera. But I'm taking less than what I should have. I'm doing it just for the camera. Oh, come on. It was $3,795. It would give me $3,795, but. Mm, okay. So see, it's placed. Yeah. But it's not. Like I said, with Robinhood, it's given me that price, but it's not doing that price. Let's try it again. And we'll go with a different one. Okay. So we'll go to $27. Now it's dropped down to $1.41. No, it moves fast. Huh? Yeah, Robin Hood's killing me here. So, oops. Oh, I got to get rid of that. Okay, so this order's still open. Mm -hmm. So, oh, somebody just took it. Oh, so, good. Watch. So, see, we come over here. All right. So, and actually, look. Mm. So, I did 55 orders over here. Yeah. Uh, all of them went. And oh, this is an old one. So here you go. So it did take. Sorry, y'all didn't get to see the actual uh, thing there. But so this will tell you that's how much money I got right there. Three thousand seven hundred ninety-six dollars for the twenty-six yeah. contracts. And let me see. Let me cover. Ah, you know, the bad thing is it's got it's got the name of the stocks written all over it. But let me show you that there. If you look at the bottom across from my thumb, you'll see that 3,000 number. Jenny, you want to check that on mine? Uh, let's see. So on mine, if you can see it, uh, you know, it's $3,796. And we'll come over here. So here's this one. This is the first one we did, and it got picked up as well. So what did I end up getting on this one? $1,595. Okay, so there you saw. And this took longer than normal. This should have taken, if I'm by myself doing it at home, this is uh, five minutes because I know how to maneuver the app and I don't have to explain everything. So let's go ahead and add that up. So what was that? Uh, 1595 plus, what was the other one? Da -da 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 -da. That's this one. Thirty-seven ninety-six. So plus thirty-seven ninety-six. So you saw I just made that much money for the week. Okay. That's how much money I'm gonna make for the week in this account. It's not my only account. So uh like I said, probably against my better judgment to be doing this, but I just want to shut up the, the naysayers. I mean, y'all just heard me walk through it. Um, I own the stock and uh, I said what price I paid for the stock and what I'd be willing to pay for the stock. And y'all, y'all just saw, even though that stock's at, at $15 and, and it's got to go to 18, someone was still willing to pay me that much money, 
fifteen hundred dollars for the opportunity. So is that somebody on Robinhood that did that? Oh no, that's that's everywhere. All over the world. Okay. All over the Let's world. Let's go ahead and get to some of these comments here. We got a bunch of comments here, and I'll, I'll read them. And you can respond to them. Okay. So, military dog says hi. Uh, Mark Richard, good morning, guys. Kevin, when I get there in June, I want to uh, want you to do. I want your doing just with uh, maybe. Oh, you want something you can do with a thousand dollars or two? Uh, I mean, there are stocks. Remember, you got to own a hundred shares. Yeah, so you got to be a stock you can own a hundred shares yeah. of. Okay. Yeah. So that I mean, you could do one contract with the ten dollars stock. Okay. Lim says hi. Good morning. Good morning, Richard. Uh, Mark Richard, I can afford to lose or walk away from it, but. I trust your skills. Um, let me ask you something like, what is the, how can you lose money at that? Is there a way to where you- cover call. There's no way you can lose money. Unless you have to sell this. Didn't okay. it last week, didn't somebody tell me that you had a stock that you put a, a call on and it went way low. And if you would have sold, you would have lost money. If you just waited it out yeah. until it came back, right? Exactly. That's like a it, strategy, right? The stocks that I have are so volatile, mm -hmm. you know, that will drop. Uh, one of them that you saw today, the 2,600 shares, uh, that's up 127% since October. Mm. You know, I mean, it's going from eight to 31 to all kinds of crazy stuff. That's why I don't mention it to you guys. And uh, uh, like one of, one of your commenters made from that one video when you were asking me if I wanted to buy a car. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm just going to stay renting the bike. And I said, you know, also all my money's in the, the stock market. Right. You know, if it goes down like that, then, you know, like I said, if I would have sold, I would have lost money. So I just waited it out and boom. You know, uh, and Brian says, hi, guys, Mike. I'm a proponent of the wheel of strategy. The wheel strategy, and you, that's what I do. Yeah, okay, do you implicitly choose stocks that you can't, that you don't mind owning? Bro, owning yeah. I only do yeah. that with stocks. I okay. like owning, and I deal with two stocks. That's it. I've been doing it for over three years. I know how volatile it is. I can ride it out. I've got the finances, not worried. I've actually taught friends who, you know, I've got a friend who's going to see this, uh, taught him. He was using the same stocks as me. And boy, he loved it when it rode, rode high. But then when it, all he said was, oh my God, I just went from being this much up to this much down. Oh my God, this is horrible. And then all of a sudden, boom, it's right back. Well, once it got right back, now, and you also got to remember, even when it's down, I make money, you know, I mean, we can work out what percentage I got on my money today uh, from those trades because I know how much the stocks cost that I've got. And all we have to do is divide how much money I've made into that number. And that'll tell me what percent I make for the week. But even when times are tough, bad, I'm still making a half percent on my money. And I got a question for you. Like, how do you... It sounds like it's almost like panning for gold to find stocks that'll work for this system that you've got. Um, how long did it take you to find these two stocks that you, you seem to be making the most money on? And how did you go about choosing them? Um, you know, if I say that, that could give away what, uh, what I'm doing, which okay. ones. So um, anyway, I just, uh, trial and error, you look at things. I mean, like I said, all of y'all who own stocks, if you own 100 shares of stock, you know, but what if that stock's real stable and it's been stable for a long time? Then the premium's not going to be as much. Okay. But still, again, what if you're getting uh, a quarter of a percent uh, a week and you do that every week, mm -hmm. that's still 13 extra percent on your money in a year. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So 25% every week, that's an extra 13%, not counting what your stock does. You know, and the yeah. premiums and everything – you know, will go up and you'll make more money accordingly. So what you're saying is you really need to find a, a volatile stock if you want to make the most money, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the more volatile it is, uh, the higher your premium will be. You know, you can look at something like Tesla. I was looking at Tesla earlier. Right now, um, the stock's two, $237.15. At mm -hmm. least it was when I was looking. Yeah. So I looked to make $5 on that stock in one week to make it go up to two forty two fifty. That was paying $308 a contract. Wow. Well, divide 308 into uh, 237, 23,715. Uh, I, I forgot what it came out to. So I'm sure one of y'all will answer. Less than, uh, well, a little more than 1% because I think it ended up being, if you did it every week, it'd be 60% extra on your money. Wow. You know, and you also have to remember, 
if these covered calls, if these actually hit, mm -hmm. like the one I did, I think I did it at 27. Yeah. Uh, I paid 25.42. So if that hits 27, I'm now going to make an extra two dollars and fifty eight cents on those twenty six hundred shares of stock. So you just saw me make what was it? I don't know what it was. I don't even remember yeah. five thousand. But if that other one hits 18, the other one hits 27, I can make another, you know, four or five grand. Just some comments. Uh, Remo, the WODM network. Thank you so much. Hit the like button, folks. Thanks. I appreciate that, my friend. Thanks for the, the support. And Average Joe's Life, Kevin, did a couple of good videos on this, of this on his channel that last year. Check them out after the live stream. So he had a couple seven of months ago. Yeah, so seven I did months it seven ago, months ago. Yeah. That goes over both strategies. Yeah. And, uh, and, and just one one thing I want to point out again is he's not trying to sell you anything. He's just showing you because uh, he he told some people what he was doing. They were interested. So yeah, we'll just make a video about it. You know, I make a video about all kinds of things with all kinds of people. And when I first met Kevin, he told me about it. And he's you know kind enough to go online and just show you guys you know an idea of what he does. And you don't buy anything. We're not selling anything. There's you no know, you keep your money. We don't want your money. It's just you know it's showing you there's. There's different ways to make money when you come over here. And if you've got the mind like Kevin does and you can figure this stuff out, you can do well. Um, let's see, an average show's life. Are you trading index options, ETF options, or equity options? Just regular, regular old stocks. Regular old stocks. Yep. Just now let me go ahead and wrap up mine because I'm gonna uh, I recommend all you guys watch this live stream, talk to my viewers now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up my video. Okay. But you can y'all can check out this entire live stream on Marks. But uh, go ahead and leave questions and comments in mine, and I uh, appreciate y'all watching. Thanks. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, David Price, uh, stay in line. It's more fun in the Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> you never know when it's going to go off. I tell you, when I was tutor in English, it went off on me all the time. Uh, Defons, why wouldn't the buyer just buy from the market instead of your shares that you are trying to sell for a profit? Why can't they just buy it now for 24 instead of the 27 later on? Good That's a great question. That's a great question. And so for both options, um, I'm dealing, it, doing the covered calls right now, I'm dealing with the optimist. Told you guys, this stock is crazy. I mean, it's, it's moved 20 points in a day, 80 points in a week. So the person I'm making the deal with, what, what, what did I get paid? Uh, 32 31 cents yeah okay so it's for him just to break even because he's got to buy it from me for 18 and he paid me 31 so his break even is 1831 but say this guy thinks it's going to go to 20 or 21 and this is the thing i will tell you okay you can't lose money selling covered calls but you can be disappointed okay now what I'm going to say here, about 85% of the time, the deal I just made today will expire harmlessly on Friday. I keep all the premiums. I get my stock back. I do it again on Monday. 10% of the time, it hits that price. It'll hit $18. And so I sell it, and it's right around that thing. We both pretty much break even, something like that. And it's great because it's still, I got that premium, and it got to 18 5% of the time, the other person will be right. So say this person thinks, it's not going to be 18 on Friday. It's going to be $21 on Friday. If it does, I still have to sell it to him at 18. So technically I didn't lose money. I'm still going to make a great profit for the week. Like I said, we can look at the numbers in a little bit and see what percentage I made on my money in the week, but I can leave money on the table. But there's also a way out of that. Like I told you when we first started, I sold to open. I sold the contract to open the contract. If I want to get out of the contract, say it goes crazy. So all of a sudden, boom, uh, you know, they make some miracle discovery and all of a sudden the stock goes from, from $15 to 22. I can buy my way out of that. What I will do is just the opposite. As I sold to open, I can go in and buy to close. It's very simple. I mean, it's the same, it's just the opposite of what I did, but in this, your site will work you through it. I mean, it's very simple. Now it's gonna cost you more than it cost 
then you got paid because of course everything shot up it's gone way beyond your expectations so if you want to buy your way out of it it's going to cost you more so what you have to look at is say okay i agreed to sell it for 18 i only got 32 for it it might cost me 250 to get out of it so now i'm down 218 dollars per contract or two dollars and 18 cents a share but if I do that and buy my way out, now I'm getting that extra $6 in profit. So it cost me two fourteen dollars to buy my way out, but I'm getting $6. So I'm actually making $3.86 that I wouldn't make if I didn't buy my way out. So, but I deal with extremely volatile stocks, and that happens to me maybe four to six times a year. If you get something that's not as crazy, you know, less likely to happen. And I'm also a pretty aggressive on uh, which premiums I pick. Like I said, it goes up in 50 cent increments. And I just happened to go from, it was uh, what, 25 bucks or 24.75 to 27. And that paid me uh, 140 bucks, whatever. You could go to 30. You know, the higher you go up, the less your premium is gonna be, but less likely that it will hit that number. You know, so you could go to 30 and it might only pay you, it might have only paid you 85 a contract, but still the chances of that hitting 30 on this stock, you know, I mean, you got a 96% chance of, of not selling it at all. So, um, let's see, con let's see. Sumo, nice to see you. Uh, Coconut Dreams, awesome info, Kevin and Mark. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We appreciate it. Uh, Frederick Walker, got to learn this. Have I a six-figure bank account and don't make anything in, in, in interest? Okay, we hear that a lot. Uh, Mike, do you also do credit spreads or only wheel strategy type of transactions? Only wheel. I limit any chance I, of, of losing money. You know, I mean, I do cash secured puts. There's things, naked puts, all that other stuff. I don't mess with those. You can lose serious money. You don't know what you're doing. You know, cash secured puts, very nice and easy. Covered calls, I own the stock, I set the price, I get paid for it. Nice and easy. You saw what I did. It's simple and I make good money. Uh, Defons, what happens if the options are assigned? How do you close the contract? It's automatic. By the close of, the, of Friday's business, and see that person I made the deal with, doesn't have to buy it from me believe it or not even if it hits 18 dollars, he doesn't have to buy it from me he just paid for the right to do it so he can decline it and i will still keep the 1595 dollars or the three thousand five hundred dollars that the other person paid me and get my stock back but if it gets assigned he automatic it just automatically gets taken out of my account and sometime on uh sunday when everything's all worked out Boom, I will now have, I, I sold 5,500 shares at $18. So I would have probably, I don't know, uh, you know, you guys can- Five 20, grand, right? Oh, no, the uh, 5,500 times 18 oh. would be over 100 grand. Oh, wow. So I'll have over $100,000 in my account. And then what I will turn around and do is the other strategy called the cash secured puts to where I will make the deal again to buy a stock, the same stock. Mm -hmm if it drops to a certain level. Mm. And it actually pays better premiums than the calls. The calls don't pay as well because um, you're gonna get extra money if it hits that number anyway. So, but the calls pay better. And so I'm actually, I would love to have both of these, all of these called away from me today. And so next week I can go back to doing puts. Mm. Okay, let's see, um, Mike, um and do you use the uh, nope. geeks to choose your strike price? If so, which one do you use the most? Nope. Couldn't even tell you what Delta Gamma and all that Our stuff Greeks. is. I don't know what that is. Yep. Uh, I, yeah. Kevin. Hey, Kevin's my friend, my, the sound mixer. We're going to see him soon. Hello from another Kevin and stock trader. I uh, prefer the thick of thinkers, think or sw think or swim platform for uh, trading, not Robinhood. I have multiple accounts. Yeah. I just showed the Robinhood because it's really quick and easy to go through. Uh, is, that, so, is that correct? Think or Swim, is that what it's called? I think it's Swim platform, yeah. Oh, I thought it was a so, Which I'm not familiar with, but, um, and it's, you know, like I said, I've got 
other accounts, which after this live stream, I'll go in and, and deal with those. I'm not through for the week by far. Okay, you're not through, okay. April, I came in late. Do you have to go through to through a stock broker? No, I mean, I'm on Robin. Robin, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Asia Miser, Miser, excellent. An average Joe's life. Do you always try and buy your stocks back at a lower price? If you did have to sell it, I mean, to keep the ball rolling. Absolutely, that's the wheel strategy. Okay. So if I sell it all at uh, 18, mm -hmm. next week I will do uh, cash secured puts where I put up the cash mm -hmm. to uh, buy it back at, if it hits 1650 a share. Mm -hmm. And it's and you saw like I sold this away for 32. Um, I will probably get paid something like 70 a contract mm -hmm. for that. And so it's got to go down to 16 or less. And the thing with puts, it's kind of the opposite of the calls. I'm agreeing to buy it at sixteen fifty. Well, if it drops to fifteen dollars, I'm still I still have to buy it at sixteen fifty. But that's okay. I love the stock now. I would buy it back at eighteen. I'd be happy to do that. But why do that when I can make a deal? It's such a volatile stock. I could rebuy it on Monday at eighteen. And what if it drops down to sixteen fifty on Friday? You know, I'm just down a dollar fifty a share, and I'd be fine with that. But this way, I don't buy it on Monday. It's eighteen, but it does drop to sixteen fifty. That's when I buy it. So I get it. I save a dollar fifty, and someone pays me seventy cents a share to do it. Excellent, uh, Captain Billy Jack. I heard Robinhood is a slow platform for trading. Can you use uh, E Trade or Charles Schwab? Um, yeah, we had some problems with it ourselves tonight. It was a little slow. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I I use one of those. Um, do you, on Robin? Do you have to ask permission also in that? Yep. Oh, you do. So Every I single to, one. Okay, I have to ask permission. So what you do? You're going to go in there, go into support and everything. Ask them. Say they'll have every one you go to up in the tab somewhere. It's going to be options. Go mm -hmm. in there, and there's going to be levels. I mean, there's crazy things you can do with options. Just ask for level one. You know, like uh, some people, uh, I don't know, I think my cousin's on E-Trade, got permission to do covered calls, but not cash secure puts. The guy's got a lot of money in there and there's, they won't let him do it. Mm. You know, whereas, you know, other platforms just go in, they're going to ask your experience. It's up to you what you put down. And, uh, you know, normally you'll get approved. Mm. W. I'm a self-directed investor. I buy stocks, mutual funds, etc. Question, with covered calls, why is someone willing to buy from you instead of just direct from the open market? Good question. Like we said, on Monday, this I'm dealing with an optimist when I'm doing covered calls. So this guy says, okay, I'm going to sell it for $18. I'll be happy to sell it for $18 on Friday. On Monday, this guy's done all his homework, all his analytics. The stock to him is going to be a $24 stock. But we make this deal for $18. If it hits 24, I still have to sell it to him for $18. So that's what he's counting on. And he needs at least $18.32 to break even. And remember, I think the stock was $14.75 when we started. So I did it for $18 or whatever. So, I mean, it has to do a big jump just to get to the number I'm happy with. But that's also a reason why I didn't pay very much. You saw I only got $31 a contract for that, yet I got $140 for the other contract where the stock was $25, and I'm saying I'll sell it for $27. Okay. Let's see who else we got here. Um, man work. Hello, guys. Kevin, did you try to play with the TNA and TZA ETF? Is it safer and more profitable to go in covered options, white TY? I don't have any idea what he's talking about. I don't deal with any ETFs. Okay. I, I, I deal with two basic stocks. That's it. You know, I guess they do have options on ETFs and, you know, ETFs is a safe thing. Um, but I don't know anything about it, okay. honestly. Fair enough. You don't know. You don't know. Um, Mike. Is this your main income generation or do you also have a normal investment portfolio and use this to juice your returns? I would say about um, maybe 15 to 20% is just some buy and hold. Mm -hmm. And the 80% is this options. 
you know, and uh, I also am a passive investor in an apartment complex in Seguin, Texas, right outside of San Antonio. So, you know, believe me, all my eggs aren't in one basket. Okay, next we have um, George. Hello from New Jersey. Kevin, this sounds somewhat like any insurance underwriting. Am I wrong? I don't know. Never done an insurance underwriting. Okay, I don't know. What, I don't know about that. Sorry, we, don't, we can't answer that question. Uh, Russell Swatts. You only trade these specific one or two stocks all the time? Yep, absolutely. I know I'm like the back of my hand. I know by reading certain news. I know by what the Fed's doing with interest rates. Trust me, I, I know more about macroeconomics than a lot of people. You know, and, and I'm, I've learned the hard way. I'm self-taught on this. You know, I mean, when, when the Fed came out, uh, I want to say uh, it was November 21st, when they first, of 2021, they came out and said, we're going to raise rates next year. And everything, well, I didn't know what the heck that meant. So I learned the hard way. So I've learned, you know, trial and error and everything. I've watched these two stocks. I know what's, what's going on. There's some news this week that can make both my stocks shoot up, you know. So that's why I was a little hesitant to uh, take these lesser premiums, but I just did it for the video. Like I said, I've got other accounts, so I'll be all right. I'll make it up. So I took it on the chin. For the video. For so the that, video. that's something uh, else that, that's interesting that you didn't just look in, you know, some listing of stocks and say, okay, this is volatile, I'll do this one. You research that stock, research the companies, you know, the companies inside and out. So you're making educated decisions when you decide what to do on a daily basis. Am I right? Sure. Yeah. You know, I mean, I first started out, I was buy and hold just like everyone else. Then I realized, okay, well, I came across a, a video on options. You know, I started out looking at day trading, too risky, did swing trading, did pretty good with that. But then I came across a video on options, covered calls, and uh, said, okay, I started looking. I had plenty of stocks with uh, 100 shares at the time. I don't have any of those stocks anymore since I'm doing this, but, uh, well, maybe a couple. But, um, you know, and, and at the time, the ones I was dealing with were monthly, monthly options. I'm doing weekly now. Uh, I'm doing very volatile weekly stocks and that pays a, an outrageous amount. But the ones that I was doing, I was averaging about 4% a month, not counting on what the stock did. So, I mean, think about that 4% a month, 12 months, that's 48%, an extra 48% I was getting. And, you know, so once, as soon as I made that deal, I got the money and what I was doing was just buying more stocks. And then I'd eventually get up to a hundred shares again, you know, buying more stocks with that premium that I got paid and then I'd have another contract and just building it up like that. And then, uh, then I came across the, uh, the cash secured puts. And I was like, Holy cow, this pays even more mm -hmm. and just, uh, some trial and error. And, uh, that's silver turtle 65 Tesla stock is one of the most option traded stocks. Any recommendations? I just read a thing today that, uh, more people lost money doing puts against Tesla oh, really? last year than any other stock. That's why I don't do that. Don't do that. And for those of y'all who don't understand what that is, people are borrowing shares of Tesla, say, at $25,000, $250 a share, sorry, $250 a share. They're borrowing 100 shares. That's $25,000 worth of stock. They're selling it. And what they're betting is in 30 days or whenever they got to repay it, Tesla's going to drop down to 175. So they buy 100 shares of that, cost them 17,500. Well, they borrowed 25,000. They made 25,000, pay it back at 17,500. They made $7,500 for each contract. And they're doing that in hundreds or thousands of contracts like that. Well, if Tesla stock doesn't go down in that 30 days, say they did it at $25 and Tesla's at 27, well, now they got 25,000 for it, but they're paying it back at 27,000. So they're losing $2,000 a contract. And like I said, if you're doing hundreds, thousands, or millions of shares, which hedge funds and all that do, you lose a lot of money. Is that like what happened with GameStop? That's, uh, well, it's the, uh, yeah, that's what hedge funds were doing to GameStop. Okay. They were shorting them and uh, the Wall Street bets guys came in and stuck it to them and started buying the stock, driving the price up. 
And so when they had to repay that stock back that say they got it at 10, they were hoping to repay it at two and make $8 a share. These Wall Street bed kids came in and ran it up to $30. And so now what they bought for 10, they had to repay at 30. And again, you're doing hundreds, thousands, millions of shares. And, yeah. and one hedge fund, they hit them for two and a half billion dollars. Wow. Wow. And trading places. Watch yeah. that movie. They were short. I think, I don't remember which way it was, but I think they were shorting orange juice. Uh, Russell Swatch, how to select the stocks to follow your strategy? I can't tell you how to do that. Um, one thing I say, do what you know. Like if I sat down with Mark and Mark wanted to do this, Mark had all this time on cruise ships. Yeah. So I would say, let's pull up Carnival. Let's pull up Norwegian. Just for kicks and giggles earlier, I looked at Carnival and uh, had a good week last week. I don't know what happened. I told everybody during COVID that those stocks would come back when they sank down. Oh, Royal Caribbean my Carnival cousin boat. bought a ton of them. I knew they would go back. My cousin bought a ton. But right now, looking at it, you could buy Carnival stock. Just go uh, bump it up a little bit. The premiums aren't the same, but still, I forgot what it was. I think, oh, I think it was going to make like 18% extra stuff that you know yeah you know i mean that's a good tip you know that way you can go in and you know you read the news you're interested in we got a buddy of ours who's i mean he he probably knows just a little bit less about tesla than elon musk yeah and he's probably watching this mm -hmm. and uh you know i mean he could he could do great dealing options with tesla he hasn't yet but he could he's thinking about it he he's, told thinking. Me. he's thinking about it Yes. Uh, Captain Billy, my Ameritrade account got bought, bought out by Charles Schwab. Yeah, so did mine. But it stopped trading in 2022, so I need to get familiar with the Schwab platform. And I didn't like either one. And my, my TD Ameritrade just uh, went over in October as well. Yes. So I've, I've got two accounts over in Schwab. Right. We now. like Charles Schwab over here because they give you back your ATM fees and you take your money out of uh, an ATM. Yes, I do. Uh, yeah. do. Do you have a Yeah, I do. I've got Charles Schwab. I don't trade stock. I just put my money there. That's great. Every month. I mean, if yeah. you look at that balance, all of a sudden you get, you see that $30 refund for ATM fees. Yeah. There's a dinner. Yep. An average Joe's life. So at the end of the day, your actual income is your profit from the put, le put less, the cost of the covered call to buy it back. Am I right about that? Okay. That's, that's, uh, that's pretty that right? complicated. Yeah, that's <clears throat> the way you you worded that. I don't know if you're talking about how earlier I was saying if you had to buy back the covered call that really took off, which very rarely. Please so ask about you and your money. Like, what's your? Oh no, I mean, I make money off of both. Yeah, both. Yeah. I mean, this week, like I said, you just saw me make five thousand bucks in this account. Say it gets called away, and like I said, I'll have a hundred thousand in cash for the eighteen dollars stock. And then it'd be 2,600 shares at 27. That'd probably give me about 80 grand. So I'll have 100, about 180 grand to play with cash secured puts. And those actually pay even better. So instead of getting 140 in one thing and 32 in the other, I'll probably get about 210 a contract and 80. So see, I'll, I'll make a good 25% more doing uh, cash secured puts. And like I said, eventually, because my stock is so volatile, uh, even though it gets to 18 this week, next week it can drop to 1550. Mm. I've still got to buy it at 1650. And I don't mind that, you know, because it could go up again next week, but I will still be able to sell a covered call next week. Believe it or not, I get it at 1650. I can sell it the next week for 1650, the same thing that I bought it for, and make a boatload of money. Wow. That's how crazy it is. I can sell it for the same thing I bought it and get money for it the week where I bought it and then get money for it at the same price the week I sell it. Uh, Mike, do you use macro news to determine whether you will establish a trade for the week? And is your trade always on the first day of the week to get the best premium? Yes, because it's five days. So think about that. On Monday, there's more uncertainty than any other day. Once, once Monday is gone, now you got four days. And each day gets closer to Friday, there's more certainty of where that might end up. So it's going to pay less and less each day. And on Friday, you can't even sell 
uh, a new contract on a stock because that's the last day. But um, yeah, on certain weeks, like I know when the Fed's meeting, when they were doing interest rates and everything, I would wait, you know, and it sucked because they would do it midweek. They would meet on Wednesday. Jerome Powell would come out and speak out of both sides of his mouth on Wednesday. And uh, then things wouldn't really take into effect on Thursday. So it's like crap, you know, and sometimes it, you know, is up or down. And fortunately, you know, they've come out now. They're not going to raise interest rates. Sounds like they're going to start cutting rates as early as June, maybe as late as September, but probably sometime in the summer. So that's why a lot of these growth stocks and companies that are borrowing money are going to do much better this year. Uh, as David says, uh, are the stocks U.S. or foreign? U.S. Okay, U.S. stocks. Yep. Uh, George Arenas, uh, insurance takes premium. Betting the insured probably will never need to claim. Insurance claim would be searching the strike price. Okay. Uh, I guess that answers the other guy's yeah, question. That's, that's somebody else's question. W. It, is it worthwhile to subscribe to any of the stock market research reports or do you do study up yourself? I do all the study myself, but I will tell you there's a, a macroeconomics genius out there. Her name is Lynn Alden. It's Lynn with one, one N and uh, she's a macroeconomics genius. She does a free newsletter. Get that first. Start reading it. She just put one out two days ago. And, uh, and if you like what you see, her newsletter is like 120 bucks, 140 bucks for the whole year. But she lists her portfolio. She'll put a, a portfolio up there uh, for ETFs only. Um, dividend things. There's tools that you can buy from her. She's got an options calculator, which I looked at and didn't make a lick of sense to me. But, you know, it's a way you can put it in and it'll tell you, you know, what you think your chances are of getting paid. But I mean, she is just, she's like a female rain man and just, uh, I, I respect the heck out of her. And that's a good thing. You can go on. If you buy her thing, she'll list all these different stocks and that's stock she likes and she knows what she's doing. So you can actually look at those stocks. Once you get approved for options, then you can go in on whatever your platform is. Check out each stock. Just go in and click on options for that stock. It'll tell you and you can figure out yourself which one you'd be willing to do. Uh, Russell, is it covered calls what you did just now? What other trades do you do? That was covered calls. And uh, I do the wheel strategy, which means eventually my stocks will take off and up to where I have to sell them. I'll get a boatload of cash. And the next week I will do what's called cash secured puts, where I will rebuy the same stocks. I'm just going to do it at a lesser price. Well, I'm going to, I'll throw a deal out there saying I will buy it. And just like um, when I did the covered calls, I was making a deal with an optimist. Puts is just the opposite. Like I said, it's very volatile. Some guy might might read the news and again say, okay, Fed's meeting next week. They could just all of a sudden come out of nowhere, say they're going to raise rates. Stocks could crash. I don't like the chances. So he's kind of hedging his bets. So if it's $18 and I say I'll rebuy it back at $16.50, but this guy in the back of his mind thinks it could drop all the way down to 12 then he's willing to pay me, you know, $150, $200, maybe more on a contract for that because it would still be less. You know, he, he, he'll get it from me for $1,650 plus, say, uh, $200, so that'd be $2 a share. So uh, $1,650, he would need $1,450 or less to break even. But that's all I'm doing. I, and Oh, I just don't want to say more. It's very volatile stock. So the people I deal with, it's their lunatic fringe. Okay, they really are. Uh, concept of options came from commodities market where farmers started to sell options for the crops they were growing to limit their risk for things like uh, weather and such during the harvest time. Like the great movie, the greatest movie on time, Trading Places. Yep. That was all about the orange crops, I think. Yep, orange uh, juice. An average Joe's life. Uh, side note. Hey, Kevin. Gray Saints. Go, go, go Saints. Go Saints. Who that? Okay, yeah. Go Saints. yeah. You see, they, beat, they scored on the last play. They ran up the, the score on the Falcons to win 48 to 17. Hmm. The coach called to, to kneel the, the ball on the last play. The Saints had the ball on the one, but the Saints had a running back who hadn't scored all year. And so they decided on their own to give him the ball, and they scored on the last play to make it 
48 to 17. And the Atlanta Falcons coach wouldn't shake the Saints coach's hand. They they had a little exchange at, at midfield. Mm. So, yeah, who that? But they missed the playoffs. Silver Turtle, uh, Trading Places movie was based on the Hunt brothers trying to corner the silver spot price. I remember when that whole thing happened, people were selling their grandma's silverware and everything, and they were melting it down uh, because they thought silver was going to go up in it forever. And then eventually it crashed back down, didn't it? They yeah. lost a lot of money. Um, let's see. Napoleon Schwab has informed me that they're, they'll lock my trading account after I'm out of the U.S. for six months or more. What broker is okay with U.S. citizens trading from the Philippines? Um, you have to maintain a, an address in America. Have you got like your mom's house or, or your you know, relative's house that you can still get mail at? They'll accept that. But you have to have some kind of address in, in, the, in America, right? I will tell you now, I'm a taxpaying U.S. citizen with a residence in Spring, Texas. Uh, I am over here in Southeast Asia, actually working and traveling. I'm an international blogger, so I'm here working, but I'm also just traveling. Yeah. So I am not a Philippine citizen. I'm a U.S. citizen, and I'm not breaking any of their rules. Yeah. Neither am I. Let's see. Um, Devon, if you trade in options, are you mandated to report to the IRS every quarter? I do right now because I'm not I am I'm not employed by anyone. If I was with a company that was holding payroll taxes, or, you know, federal taxes and everything out on me, I wouldn't have to file quarterly. But since no one is, I actually file quarterly. And one of the reasons why I was going to Puerto Rico was, you know, I showed Mark earlier today on a uh, capital gains tax calculator that, uh, you know, it, it says that I'd pay, what was it, 98 grand? Yeah. If I, if I just did this every week, at the end of the year, I would owe 98 grand. And this is just one of my accounts, so I've got more than that. But um, So I was taking out the money that this tax calculator said. I have a, an accountant in Houston. I wasn't actually sending her my, uh, my paperwork, my statements or anything. You know, my bad. And uh, so I would just, when the payment was coming up, you know, I'd either email or call her and say, hey, you know, send this much. Well, we just had a long discussion the other day. And, uh, and in fact, I think she was wrong on most of everything she told me about Puerto Rico. So I've reached out to his guy. But you need an accountant in Puerto Rico. Yes. And well, I'm going to call one if your guy doesn't help me. Yeah. But um, she did inform me that I've way overpaid. You know, as a matter of fact, there's a, a quarterly payment coming up on the 15th that I don't even have to pay for. That's uh, kind of good news, isn't yes. it? Yeah, we're paying. Yeah, so that was, <laughs> I'm actually going to get a I don't have to pay this one, and I'm going to get a refund. You're off the naughty list, yeah. Yes. Okay, let's see. Uh, Mike, usually short puts are uh, better than covered calls because the market tends to rise, and short puts have uh, less chance to be assigned, especially for quality stock company. There you go. Okay, so and, he agrees with you. And I don't deal with a quality yeah. stock company. Mine's crazy. Uh, David Price, ever look at Philippine stock? That's a good question. No, I know uh, Jollibee's traded here in the Philippines mm. on their market. I wonder if we could even do that since we're not uh, Philippine citizens. We could even trade in the stock market here. I don't know. I don't know either. Probably not. But uh, Does highly volatile stock equate to a quality company thought? Normally. Uh, well. I mean, can a volatile stock be a company that's in trouble? Well, a volatile stock, like I said, look at Tesla. Yeah. I mean, all of a sudden now, if you go to Yahoo News and, and pull up Tesla and look, there's a million articles right now. Elon Musk does drugs or did drugs. Something like that, that can make, make it drop this and that. So, but Tesla's still, you know, according to some people, do your own research is a Quality company, you know. Okay. I should run through these uh, last comments here. When doing a cover call, do you ever know the person's name who is buying you, buying from you, or more importantly, do they know your identity, such as your name? Nope. No, they don't. You're anonymous. No. And as a matter of fact, I was hoping to show y'all when it got done live, but it didn't. And while we were trying to do another order, they got boom, taken. So. Well, anyway, guys, it's late here, so I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much for coming over and sure. doing this play. I really appreciate it. So I hope this kind of quiets all the criticisms and 
people that were saying like they're not sure you know what's really going on how can this possibly be real and now you know and i've seen the seen his portfolio showed me everything um i still don't claim to understand it but i don't understand fractions either so <laughs> anyway thank you for watching guys thanks for subscribing please check out kevin's channel and what is your channel again too much time on my hands 65. don't forget the 65. i'll put a link to it here and I'll also put a link to our the last interview that uh, we did a couple of days ago so thanks for watching thanks for subscribing we'll see you next time um brian says uh, kevin you have a trading channel that can be joined no he doesn't no but i am by tuesday night i am going to put out a pretty cool video on covered calls of a very great uh uh way to invest yeah uh well in the the kind of a account to invest in the best one to invest in uh i'm going to do covered calls and i'm going to do a thing on dividend reinvesting and it's mainly going to be targeted for people uh what it's going to do i'm going to start for people at age 55 and i'm going to do this i'm going to i went and bought a whiteboard today i'm going to do starting at 55 to age 62 which is early age social security yeah. and i'm going to show to where how much money you would have if you started at age 55 to 62 using three different stocks one will be a uh, two will be option stocks one will be a dividend stock and then uh a, another big plus is uh which which type of uh account to use so check that out i'll have it up tuesday night wednesday morning at the latest all right guys thanks for watching we'll see you next time bye That was good, huh? Yeah, I think so. So we'll see. I had 100 people over there. That was nonstop.